<laughs> Hello, I'm Pastor Price. This is my wife, First Lady Pamela Price. We'd like to thank you for joining us here at Living Epistle Facebook Live, our Bible study or our Bible training session. On tonight, we're going to pick up where we left off last week, talking about, oh, I got to get my notes here. <laughs> On last week, we were talking about reconcile. We're going to finish up reconcile, and then we're going to go and talk about redemption. But before we get into all of that, we want to open up with a word of prayer. So wherever you are, if you would just bow your heads with us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for this time and this opportunity to get into your word. I ask that you would open up our hearts, open up our minds, help us understand and comprehend what you are sharing and saying with us on tonight. And God, we give your name the praise, the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. The Holy Word of God. The Holy Word of God. It is my food. It is my food. Water, Water. Light. light, strength, strength. And, final and final authority. Through it, Through it. I've been redeemed, I've been redeemed. And, reconciled and reconciled unto God. Now, now as, I hear the word of God, as I hear the Word of God, faith will come. Faith will come. Through, faith, Through faith, salvation is mine. Salvation is Through faith, mine. Faith. Healing is mine. Healing is mine. Through faith, Through faith. deliverance is mine. Deliverance is mine. Through faith, <coughs> Pros prosperity is mine. Prosperity is mine. <laughs> all of God's blessings. All of God's blessings. All of God's blessings. All of God's blessings are mine. All right then. All right. Again, like I said, we're going to pick up where we left off talking about reconcile. So, if you will, turn to Hebrews, the second chapter, uh, looking uh, beginning there at the seventeenth verse. Hebrews two and seventeen. My app not working. <laughs> but go ahead. What Hebrews 2 and 17. He says, Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. Now, this here is talking about Jesus being made in the form of human flesh so that he will be able to understand, comprehend what we who are housed in this flesh, what we have to deal with. But let's go on a little bit more. He says, wherefore in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest and things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of of the people. Jesus, he, he, he made a way in which God and mankind can be reconciled. This is what he's referring to. He says, for in that he himself both suffered being tempted, he allowed himself to be tempted, and says he is able to secure, or he's able to help, aid, assist a person, and render relief. Secure them that are tempted mm. because he knows what it feels like to be in this flesh. Mm -hmm. He knows what it's like, but he won every situation with his flesh. Yeah. He won it all. All right. Well, it's kind of like he's not just talking, he experienced. That's right. And, and what I have learned over the years is you can really testify to something when you have experienced it yourself. Mm -hmm. You're not talking about theory. You're not talking about thoughts and attitudes and all of this. I mean, this is something that you have really, really experienced and gone through. You know, like me, myself, you've heard me talk about, especially here on this particular forum, talking about how God helped me in reference to my tongue and in, in my language and changing all of that. And, you know, when uh, someone say that I can't do it, I can't do it. You know, I, I have, uh, how should I say, very little patience because, you know, the word of God helped me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he helped me. He can help you. Mm -hmm. So, again, you know, he knows what it's like. Because I, I was thinking about Jesus this morning, how you think about it with Was him. it early in the morning? You know, I study in the morning. <laughs> oh. So, <laughs> It wasn't your kind of type of early, <laughs> three or four o'clock. <laughs> so anyways, I was uh, <laughs> thinking about how Jesus, he put in the time. Yes. You know, like 30 years before, because uh, he started in his ministry around 30 years old. But just think, he put in that time. He didn't just pop out and just, it was just like, I'm starting, <laughs> you know. But he, he, he put in 30 years. Yes, yes. Amen. So now we're going to look at a new word. And that is redemption. The word redemption. This is my working definition. It's the repurchase 
of something. Remember we talked about it before? Mm -hmm. Whenever there's R-E in front of the word, that means to do it again. Mm -hmm. So redemption means to buy or to acquire or pay a price. So redemption means to repurchase again. Paying the required price, whatever the cost was, that none other could pay. It is the buyback program of God. Mm -hmm. That's what redemption is all about. It is all about God buying us back. When I say buying us back, buying mankind back by paying the price that no one was able to pay. Let's go to Romans. Romans 3.21. Romans 3.21. A great example of redemption is, um, well, let's get into the word. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to it. Uh, Romans 3 and 21. Romans 3 and 21. It says, but now the righteousness of God without or on the outside of the law is made known or manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. He says here, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the buyback program that is in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. This buyback program is nowhere else. Mm. Nowhere else. I mean, people can come up with their own, mm -hmm. they can go to other places, but they are not going to be able to garner or, or acquire that uh, that is even equal or close to what, G what God has done through Jesus Christ. He says here, the redemptive plan, that redemption that is in Christ Jesus. If we say uh, nobody else is going to be able to do that. Nobody else. It's, it's kind of like... You know, when you have a name brand, mm -hmm. the name brand, a lot of times they have imitations out there. Knock off. <laughs> Knock off. <laughs> and, yes. you know, we walk around yeah. with your Gucci bag, fake Gucci bag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but look, the 25th verse says, whom God set forth to be a propitiation. That's a, that's a $10 word. That means uh, he was only, uh, that means that he was the only one that could pay the price. He says, whom God set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness or right standing for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. He says to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness or his right standing that he might be just or he might be right and the justifier or the ones who make right of him that does what? believeth in Jesus. And as I have stated before, when you believe something, there are actions that follow and support what you are believing in. If there are no actions, you're not believing. Mm -hmm. You're just talking. It, it, it must, actions must show. Like I was speaking, uh, I think it was Sunday before last, uh, third Sunday, was talking about, you know, we talk to how we have faith. But our faith has some action. And James, he talks about, you know, you, I, I can show you my faith by my actions, by how I live and my obedience to God. That way I'm showing my faith in God, my trust in him, because I believe in him and I'm doing what he says to do. I'm conducting myself because why? I have faith and I believe in mm. him. Those are my actions. Mm. Yes. Did you think about it with the... The body is the part of us that shows who we have allegiance to. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. This, this flesh, got, this flesh got, to, got to fall in line. So now let's, let's go. I'm still talking about redemption. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 1.27. 1 Corinthians 1 and 27. King James Version. It says, But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty and the base things of the world and these uh, and things which are despised have got chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. He says that no flesh should glory in his presence, 
but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us. Look what Jesus has made unto us. He is wisdom. That's why we have to seek him on direction and guidance. And righteousness. He is the only way in which we are going to have right standing with God. Then he says, and sanctification, or we're, we're set apart through him. And then he says, and redemption. The buyback program that God himself has only approved is in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That according, as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. You want to boast? You want to say some flowery words, so to say? Say it about God. Yeah. Glory in, in the Lord. In what he's done. In what he has done. All right, continuing on, let's go to Galatians 3 and 10. Galatians 3 and 10. So, you know, in this letter Paul wrote to, or to the church in Galatia, and the, the, the folks there, they were having some issues. The, these Judaizers, these people coming in and trying to upset the balance mm -hmm. and the knowledge of the people. You know, one of the things that uh, when we begin to grow and develop in Jesus Christ, in our knowledge of him and knowledge of the word, we, we must take account that the enemy of our faith does not like it. And he's going to be instrumental in trying to overthrow our faith and tear down what we have begun to build in Jesus the knowledge and the understanding and the confidence and the faith and the trust and all of these things. He wants to tear that down. And what I have found out in my lifetime over the years, there is no length that he will not go to to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because you say he would go through no lengths. He would use the closest people by you. That's what I was getting oh, at. Oh, okay. That's it. <laughs> there's no place, there's no area where he would say, I'm not going to go here. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Right, right. This is forbidden. Right, right. That's what I mean. He, he, he will use each and every one that will give him the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So let's pick it up here in Galatia uh, 3 and 10 because they had some issues going on. So he begins here. He says, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Now again, I have to caveat for those who may be joining us for the very first time or you know you haven't been with us for a while, but please know and understand that the law, which we know as the Ten Commandments, along with its statutes in the Old Testament, it has all been superseded. I think it's in, uh, is it in Hebrews where it talks about we have a better covenant mm -hmm. or we have a new contract with better promises and all like that. So this is what Paul is talking about because there were some people that came there after Paul in Galatia where the church was set up to try and pull them back into the old way of doing things to, to help, you know, someone, uh, you know, understand. Let's say that, you know, you had been driving um, you know, standard shift, a vehicle where you got, you know, six gears and you've been driving that and, you know, going up a hill is a challenge to someone driving a stick shift. But all of a sudden, you have been blessed with an automatic where you don't have to shift those gears. <clears throat> so now all of a sudden, after the person who gave you the automatic, he's gone. Mm -hmm. Then somebody comes back and say, well, man, you know, the best car ever to have is a stick shift. And you go back to driving a stick shift. After I have experienced the exactly. automatic. Exactly. <laughs> you have experienced the automatic. And he's trying to convince them, like, why are y'all doing that? Exactly. That's what it is. So let's go on here. 11 verse, he says, but that no man is justified or made right by the law in the sight of God. You, you, you have to understand that God himself implemented a plan to supersede the law, and now we're under grace, and it is almost like kind of a, like a slap in the face. <laughs> You're gonna go back to something. I think Paul even talked about it. He referred to it as being weak and beggarly, because it could it had it could not do what needed to be done. But let's go on here. He says, uh, just by, uh, by the law in the sight of God, is it? He said it is evident. For the just shall live 
by trust, reliance, and belief in God, followed up by his obedience or corresponding actions. Faith. And the law is not of faith. Let me try. I don't want to go too far. Yes. He says, and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live therein. He's basically saying, okay, if you want to live by the law, do it all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do it all. You want to jump out there and say that you're going to live by the law and, you know, you need to set up all of this sacrificial systems and you need to honor these holy days and all of this other stuff. Do it all. Don't, don't slack it. He says, 13 verse, Christ hath redeemed us or brought us back from the curse of the law because the curse of the law said, if you didn't do it all, that you were cursed. Mm -hmm. He says, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham, we always like to talk about those blessings, mm -hmm. like to talk about those blessings, but as you mentioned Sunday past, we don't like to talk about those curses. Mm -hmm. That Those curses, <laughs> I went back and looked today, mm -hmm. that takes up so much, I think it was only the first 15 are, are blessings. Yeah. But the balance of that book, yeah. I had to turn it a few pages. And it was, it a, was list. Yeah, a, a long one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A long it one at no that. Joke. It's, like, it's, no like, joke. It, it's as if it was trying to cover whatever the devil was trying <laughs> to throw out. And watch this, today it would be added more. <laughs> yes. So he says, is that the blessing of Abraham? might come on the Gentiles, coming upon a people that did not have a relationship with God, had no, co the, the Bible even talks about the commonwealth that Israel had, that, that knowledge and everything, Gentiles did not have it. He says, but now in Christ Jesus, come uh, the, the blessings, the promises of Abraham come upon the Gentiles, how? Through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through that, that's a big deal. Yes, the, you, you know, when you really understand or you making your way to understanding how this works is you think about in the beginning, this is what the original plan was so you can have the spirit of God in you. Amen. So you'll be able to have that abundant life. Amen. So you can, we, we would operate in the spirit, that which is connected to the heaven, to God. Yes. And he's got it back. That's, this is what redemption is. <laughs> is that's right. He got it back. Because like you said a time before, in the, in the Old Testament, when Adam messed some things up, Holy yeah. Spirit left. Yes, he, he left. <laughs> it's like, y'all don't want me here. Yeah, and, it's, <laughs> and this is what redemption is. He, that's why it says for the Spirit. It says um, the promise of the Spirit. That's what he's trying to get the Spirit back in us. Because that's what we need. We need him to lead us and to guide us. Like Jesus talked about in John 14. Yeah. He, he's the one that's disseminating life, the abundant life, if you can Amen. comprehend that. Yes. The blessings. Yes. Like, you're supposed to get this. This is your inheritance. All right. Let's go okay. on. This, this is getting good here. <laughs> We're going on now to Colossians 1 and 9. Colossians 1 and 9. And again, I'm reading from the King James Version. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge. Again, we talked about this before. Knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Being fruitful in every good work. And increasing in the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. Strengthened with all might. According to his glorious power. Unto all patience and long suffering with joy, joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet, or another way to say it, He, he Himself has made us qualified, mm -hmm. because we could not do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. He had to come in and make us qualified mm -hmm. to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who have delivered us. From the power of darkness mm -hmm. and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. 
translated us into the kingdom glory of his dear son because <laughs> what's just the kingdom of god was here in the earth at first but to you know after redemption he didn't brought the kingdom back the kingdom of god again you remember when we were in the church and i i, I was preaching and i used this this scripture and i talked about we're all familiar with star trek mm -hmm. remember how they would, uh, you know, Spock would be, you know, on the planet and he's in some trouble and he would, you know, run and he would get on this, 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 this apparatus or thing or whatever. And he would pull his thing out and said, beam me up, Scotty. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And how it would, he would dematerialize and then he would materialize back on the ship. Mm -hmm. That is what has happened to us in Jesus Christ. Yeah. We have switched kingdoms. We've switched our residency as to where we belong and everything. We, we've switched. He did that for us. Translated us. <laughs> Translated us. And the thing about it, if I remember correctly from those old Star Trek shows, when the translating or the beaming up, that which was after Spock could do nothing about it. Couldn't even oh. stop. <laughs> Could not even stop yeah. because it was out of his hands. Yeah. The technology was above and beyond what they could even comprehend. All they knew as they were coming to either get him, <laughs> arrest him or whatever, they saw him just dematerialize before and there was nothing that they could do. His past was his past. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> wow. Glory. Wow, this is awesome. It says, in whom we have redemption. Redemption, the buyback program. And this was what the enemy don't want us to know. He doesn't. He does not. He does not want mankind to know this. And, and yeah, he like pff, she said it. <laughs> he he does not. Let's go on to uh, Tim, uh, Titus rather Titus, Titus two and eleven. Titus two and eleven. Titus two and eleven. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation or the, the, the word for that is uh, soteria, the Greek word. Soteria means in safety, preservation, and soundness. He says, bring his salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Mm -hmm. Even though the Bible was written before I got here, you got here, and everybody, you know, everybody else got here, it is yet applicable because, uh, let me see, uh, worldliness is still here, <laughs> ungodliness, uh, uh, you know, excuse me, drunkenness is still here, and unrighteous and ungodly living. Yeah. But we as believers, we are admonished to live this way. But let's go on, 13 verse. He says, looking for that blessed hope, while we're living and operating, each and every day, we're looking for with expectation, looking for that blessed hope. He says, and the glorious appearing, which is the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We should live every day with expectation, looking for Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to, again, what is it? I say, see, uh, denying un ungodliness, worldly lust, living soberly, righteously and godly in this present world. All right, let's go on here. Uh, he says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing uh, of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might buy us back from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous, wanting to do of good works. Not because the good works are going to get us in heaven or a spot in heaven. But because we are saved, we want to do that which pleases our Father. Because we have the nature of God in us. And watch this, we have the Holy Spirit in us. And the nine fruit of the Spirit is supposed to be in you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> a peculiar people. A different. Peculiar. And just yes. think a lot of times believers want to act like the world. Oh, my goodness. 
But we are not. He's telling us straight up, y'all gonna be a peculiar. You're, you're peculiar. different. You're different. You di But I mean, might as well get it into your head that as you are in Christ, you are different. different. And you know, like the uh, this this past uh, what was it past Saturday? You know, I was on a ride and. You know, I had on my living epistle gear, you know, and got scripture references and giving glory to God and all this and that. And there were some people that, you know, complimented me on. And, you know, I said, we we got to represent them. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have to represent them, mm -hmm. you know, and live this life and not be ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. I w there was no shame in my game as I was out there riding and representing Jesus Christ. I remember uh, growing up in school and... Uh, <laughs> you, you know, I come out of a Christian home, and so uh, I remember some of the kids would pick on me and say, "Yeah, she's sanctified. <laughs> she's sanctified." And for some reason, that felt so uncomfortable. Uh, anybody that was raised in church know about that, especially when they can—they're all focused on you. Like she's sanctified. She don't listen to that kind of music, or you know, it just makes you feel kind of. <laughs> but. You know, as you get older and you kind of, you know, I begin to understand what I was a part of. I didn't care. Yes. Yes. Amen. Hebrews 9 and 11. Hebrews 9 and 11. He says, but Christ being come, in, uh, be, being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. It says, neither by, the, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Eternal. Now, again, like my wife said, the enemy of our faith does not want people to know that they are, they're, they're, let, me, let me make sure I say this right. He does not want people to know that God has already implemented a plan through Jesus Christ that they can be redeemed. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want them to know that. He does not. I mean, he uses any and everything at his disposal. There is no hurdle he will not go over, under, or around <laughs> to keep an individual from getting to the place of getting the knowledge that they can be redeemed. Mm -hmm. And even, he, he has different stages because, you know, once once you know you've been redeemed, la, la, la. But then he don't want you to dive in that word because he know that, you know, he who the son set free is free indeed. Because that's where the <laughs> sanctification comes in. <laughs> yeah. As you get more knowledge, you begin to separate, separate yourself. yourself. It's like, oh, okay. And you start walking in this. That's his whole game is to prevent us from having the abundant life, yes. the life that God gives. Because, you know, he disconnected when Adam sinned. He separated himself. Amen. And so that journey has been going on and on. Yes. So. All right. Now, I'm getting ready to conclude this whole portion in reference to redemption. I want to go to 1 Peter 1 and 13. 1 Peter 1 and 13. He says, wherefore... Gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the form of lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of living or conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, past the time of your traveling or sojourning here in, in fear or respect. He says, for as much as ye know that ye were not bought back or redeemed with corruptible things, right. as silver and gold, because our, our monetary system, Mm -hmm. is based upon, or I think it was at one time, silver and gold <laughs> mm -hmm. and all like that. And I, I, well, I've only known fake silver to, uh, <laughs> to, to get corrupted. I don't know about real silver. I never, well, let's go on here. Somebody else may know. But anyway, he says, says silver and gold. He says, from your vain conversation or useless way of living, 
received by tradition from your fathers. Lord. Talking about stuff coming down through generations. And called it vain. Yes, useless. <laughs> That's what it is. Yes, what it was. It useless. Is vain. <laughs> yes, from your fathers. He says, but with the precious blood, precious, precious, precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Look at this. But was manifest or in these last times for you. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls, this is your mind, your will, your intellect, and all of this, your souls, how do you do that? In obeying the truth through the Spirit, as you said, the Holy Spirit leading and guiding us into all truth, and you being obedient to the Spirit, it, it says, into uh, and obeying, the, uh, obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, meaning that your love is pure and is unadulterated or mixed up with anything. It's pure. He says, see that ye love one another with, uh, with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. I went a little bit too far, but that's all right. You know, I was I was thinking today, and Avid and I was talking. It's amazing how we're trying, we're having to learn about redemption, and we learn different things. And if you can, if and I was thinking about, you know, how parents have to teach their children. They should teach their children. You you see how we are walking in this, and we're mm -hmm. a certain age. But if a parent taught their child when they were younger, they would get this so much sooner. And they would walk in the abundant life sooner than you. Exactly. That's the whole purpose why God is telling you, teach children while they're young. Because they can be younger. They can be in their 20s really just really comprehending and understanding the knowledge of God. Or, whereas you getting it in your 50s or 60s. <laughs> and it is, I, I, if you were to ask every parent, and they would agree that it is their job to make the next generation or their children's life better than mm -hmm. what they had it. What better way than imparting and implanting the word of God in their hearts? Mm -hmm. Wasn't it David that says, I'm by, uh, your word have I hidden in my heart yeah. so that I won't sin against you? I won't miss the mark God, yeah. because it's in my heart. I've been taught this from a child and this is what I know and this is what I've come to realize and believe in. And because I feel this way, you know, I'm able to handle the peer pressure. Mm -hmm. I don't feel funny when they, you know, refer to me as being sanctified. Yeah. Like you said, the next generation should be better. We, you know, a lot of us educate our children. Uh, to, like if you just graduated from high school, a lot of times we're like, we're going to push you for college. Why? Because you want that next generation to be better than you. Yes. It seems like only in spiritual matters do we neglect that. Ooh. Ooh. You can move on now. But I, I saw that this Ooh. morning, Ava and I was Whoa, talking. That's I was a, like, that's, a, woo that's an accurate accusation. It is. It's like God is trying to get that life to your oh, children earlier than you got it. Yes. And we have a responsibility as parents that we need to get it to them, mm -hmm. get it in them. All right. So we've gone over and we've talked about redemption, still in the R's. So now we're going to look at regenerate. This is what I mean by when you hear me say regenerate, to make alive again or create anew. Very familiar scripture, John 3, John the third chapter. Jesus interacts with this man. Let's get there first. John 3, John 3, John 3, John 3, John 3. All right, again, I'm reading from the King James Version. Remember, regenerate, to make alive again, or create anew. John 3 and 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi or teacher, we know that thou art a teacher from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. I, I 
as I'm reading this and as I've read this rather, understanding Nicodemus to be a Pharisee. That is a group of people that Jesus had a problem with. <laughs> he had problems with him mm -hmm. during his ministry. But it seems as though this guy Nicodemus is distancing himself a bit from that mindset and that thought. And he's doing it at night by going to Jesus. Because mm -hmm. the Pharisees had a problem with Jesus. <laughs> yes. But nevertheless, I mean, he went to him. He, you know, he, he made his way. He somehow, he was able to find the intestinal fortitude, if he had to do it at night, to go to him because I gotta ask him a question. Th there's something that he needed to know. And how many people do you think that walk around needing answers? Mm -hmm. The answers to life. Mm -hmm. They're all in Jesus. They're all in his word, the answers. But they have a hard time breaking away. Mm -hmm. That's a mess. I, I, That's a mess. That'll preach. That'll preach. Thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Second verse, he says, the same came to Jesus by night. And said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see ex or experience the kingdom of God. He said a man has to be born again to experience this new kingdom. Now, when I think of this, having to be born again, something has to be wrong with the current state. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> something has to be wrong. Something has to be wrong with the current state, the current situation, because if there was nothing wrong with it, there'll be no need for being born mm -hmm. again. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> But let's go. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Now, Nicodemus is referring to what a lot of people refer to, and that is the flesh. Mm -hmm. They're not seeing it in a spiritual manner or a spiritual way in which Jesus is explaining this. Mm -hmm. he, he, that's, that's, that's as far as they can go. But if they stick with Jesus, like Nicodemus is, he's going. They're going to understand it better. But let's go on here. He says, uh, Jesus answered, "Verily, verily, I say unto thee, or truly, true, except a man be born of water, and of the Spirit, going back to what you were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. he cannot enter into the kingdom of God." Mm -hmm. So now he, he Jesus, kind of you know gives him a clue what needs to be done, man, because. You know, you got to be born of water, meaning water was a ceremonial cattle. Uh, it was a thing that was used to wash. To Remember cleanse. Back, yeah, to cleanse yes. back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was, so <laughs> he's basically telling me a cleansing needs to take place. Yeah. A cleansing needs to take place. And then he talks about the spirit. He talks about something or at, at, being, uh, at the spiritual level being done by the spirit. Yes. By the Holy Spirit. And you know that word water is uh, symbolic of... Uh, word yes mm -hmm. so he says here unless these things are done he cannot enter into the kingdom of god cuteness don't get you in mm. <laughs> money don't get you in the positions that you held on terra firma earth in his culture in his society mm -hmm. will not get you in a respect uh, Respect from your fellow man. <laughs> well, respect for God. I was trying yeah, to say. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, we're, yeah, just mm -hmm. being respectful. Mm -hmm. But then again, when you think about being respectful, if you're going to be truly respectful, you're going to be obedient. But listen. <laughs> you would think, right? <laughs> Six verse. He says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. He says, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Then he tells them, marvel, M-A-R-V-E-L, not M A R. B, as in marbles. He said, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Mm. In other words, there's no other way around this. This must take, take place. Because your spirit is dead to God. It's separated from God. So 
He has the spirit, the Holy Spirit, has to give birth to your spirit. Mm. Yes. But it's, you know, how, how can I do that? Because I'm an old man, you know, and again, dealing with the flesh. Nicodemus, he was, he was just constantly, and again, people will think about the flesh. If you can get out of that and really understand what he's talking about. And the, to add to that, the word, remember he says, talks about the word, or uh, water, uh, water and mm -hmm. of the spirit, must be born of the water and of the spirit. This is where, when you hear the word of God, that's that incorruptible seed. Of the word of God coming in, yes, Trying and then you grab hold of it by faith. Yes, that's how you, that's how it connects. Yes. All right, let's let's move on a little bit more. Let's go on to Second Corinthians five and seventeen. Second Corinthians five seventeen. We're very familiar with this. It says, "Therefore, if any man be, therefore, if any man be in Christ." He is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. I want you to focus on that first part. That, that of the 17 verse. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Now, we must put this in the proper context. As I've mentioned before, if you got three teeth in your mouth and you go up to the altar, you repent of your sin, give your life to Jesus Christ, and you, you know, repent, you make him Lord of your life, and then you turn around, you know, so to say, to go back to your seat, you're going to have those same three teeth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but the change has taken place <laughs> on a spiritual plane or spiritual level before you were your spirit was dead yes. to God now your spirit is alive Yes. Now, before you didn't have a relationship with God now you do so those are the things, those are just some of the things that take place, this new creature, this new creation that we are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. We are in the family. We are now heirs of the promise. Now we have the, the promises and, and everything of Abraham. Now we are in line for it. You know, we, we have an inheritance and before we didn't. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah, before. Good. You can go buy you some tea. Yes, Lord. You, <laughs> yes, you can. Go you can go teeth. buy you some teeth. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to have that thought like if I got to wake up and have some teeth in my mouth. You can go buy you some. <laughs> oh, That's what you're going to do. <laughs> Colossians 2. Don't, don't even waste your faith on that. <laughs> don't even waste your faith. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't be going, oh, Lord Jesus, wake up in the morning and have full mouth 33 teeth. <laughs> that will be a miracle. That's going to be a miracle. Just go and buy you some. <laughs> That's going to be a miracle. Go buy you some teeth. <laughs> Colossians 2 and 13. Who Colossians 2 and 13. Whoa, man. <laughs> Colossians 2 and 13 begins. It says here, and you being dead in your sins, because this is what, you know, when you are in sin and you are missing the mark and you're living a life that is not pleasing to God and prior to you accepting Jesus, says it, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he made alive. He's, he's created a program in which you can be made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, which was contrary, and they were working against us. And took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show over them openly, winning or triumphing over them in his death, burial, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. Spoiled principalities and spoiled. powers. Spoiled. Spoiled. All right, still in the book, 
of Colossians, Colossians 3 and 1. Now this here is what we need to, I mean, really talking about being born again. And he says, if ye be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. He says, mortify, kill, subdue. Therefore, your members, which are upon the earth, he begins to lay out some things. The members of your body that engage in fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupience, covetousness, which is idolatry. He says, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. You know, <laughs> just remembering as a child, I hated for my mother's wrath to come upon me when I was disobedient. Mm -hmm. Because she would make me, she would tell me, that you go get me a switch and you bring it to me so that I can get you. <laughs> yeah. I hated that wrath. Mm -hmm. I hated that. It was, it was fun doing the bad. Don't <laughs> <worry. laughs> it was. But what that was, it just was <laughs> I didn't take that chance, right? <laughs> Seven verse. It says, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. He says, uh, where there is neither Jew, uh, Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian or sinithin, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel is against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is love, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. This is how we are to live after we have been regenerated mm -hmm. or born again. Yeah. Praise the Lord. This is it. This is it. Praise this is how we are to live mm. all right now we're getting ready to we got a little bit of time we, we still got time now we're going to get ready to go and deal with another word this word is very important and we need to understand this word and that word is repent mm -hmm. repent my working definition again going back when you see the word re means to do it again pent means to be sorry Turn around, but to do it again. Do an about face, turn in the opposite direction, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, and move forward with the intention of never turning back. Mm. Yes. And, and uh, I heard Miles Monroe say one time that pent means top. You're top you used to be at the top thinking mm. in your thoughts. And so he's trying to bring you repent bring you back to that place ah to bring you back to your thinking your higher thinking pent itself means top you know uh okay. like they said the penthouse usually is at the top right yes yeah so your thinking is was brought down go on now all right go on miss Nick. Go, go on the bed <laughs> go ahead go ahead then <laughs> i ain't even <laughs> studying no, <I'm> just <laughs> So, you, you, you know, just, just in case, there is a question as to why the need. One of the things that we're going to see as we discover more about this word repent is that 
God has always, going into the Old Testament, and we're going to see this, God has always wanted people's minds and hearts to change towards him. As you mentioned, get back to that top way of thinking because something has transpired, something has gone on that has lowered their thinking and their way of living and the way that they're operating. And he says to repent, do an about face, get your mind, your will, your intellect, all of that, get all of that stuff changed and come back and get this top level thinking again. Mm -hmm. He wants that and he's provided. And we're going to look at some episodes of that. Let's go all the way back as to the cause. Why? Why would he want us to get back to that top level thinking? Let's go to Deuteronomy 28 and 15. There's some things we need to see. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. All right, 28 and 15. We're going to do a little jumping around, but uh, we're going to get there. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Now, as uh, my wife had mentioned, uh, she, she used portion of this uh, last Sunday in talking uh, or sharing her message and everything. So we're going to pick it up here at the 15th verse. He says, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken, listen, pay attention and do unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, this here is his message uh, through Moses to ancient Israel. This, this is God speaking to them. So with that said, let's, let's go on a little bit more. Let's go to the 18th verse. He says, curse shall be the fruit of thy body. No one wants that. Mm -hmm. And it says, and the fruit of thy land. So now the cursing, because of disobedience, has affected not only my body, but the fruit of the land. Because that's a hard thing to take. If I'm a farmer, if I'm growing something out there, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if, I, if I got field of crops and all the corn or whatever it is, that's, that's, that's detrimental mm. to my well-being, not only mine, but my family. He says, the fruit of thy, he says, and the increase of thy kind or cattle. If I've got 3,000 heads of cattle and all of a sudden I come out in the morning, I, I disobeyed God. I've been disobedient to his word and I didn't get it right. And he told me, he said, curse shall be uh, the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land and the increase of thine kind. I go out there and look at my cows, mm -hmm. all of them did. And you know, with the children of Israel, when they had enemies, they would plant something and, and the, they would just come and destroy them and stuff. Or, or either, they <laughs> yeah. would take them away. Yeah. So this is yeah. a curse. And he said, and the flocks of thy sheep. If I'm a sheep herder, if I'm a sheep, you know, shepherd, and they're gone or they're dead, mm -hmm. and you know, or their, their throat sliced and everything, that's, that's, that's horrible. But let's go on to 21st verse. He says, the Lord shall make the pestilence. Oh my goodness, pestilence. We're talking about crickets and locusts and all like that. He says, cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from off the land, whether thou goest to possess it. Is pestilence disease? It's, it's kind of like that. Your, your crops being diseased or oh. destroyed mm -hmm. and all like that. Let's go on a little bit more to the 23rd verse. He says, and thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Meaning that. I can't get any rain. Think about it. If I've got crops that are planted and I need to harvest my crops, I need to take them to market, I need to sell, and therefore by me selling, I'm able to support my family, I'm able to do this, I'm able to do that. And if heaven becomes brass <laughs> and there's no rain hitting the ground, and then he says, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Oh my goodness, meaning that the water can't get through to nourish the plant. He says, and the Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. He says, from heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou 
be destroyed. This is what he told Israel. It was important that they be obedient. Still in, uh, still in, matter of fact, let's look at something else. Let's go back a little bit more. Let's go to Deuteronomy 8 and 10. Let's go back a little bit more. I should have did 8 and 10 first. 8 and 10. He says, and he tells them this through Moses. He says, when thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Beware, beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments. For his judgments and his judgments and his uh, statutes, which I command thee this day, Lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thou silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget, forget mm -hmm. the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, whom led thee through that great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, uh, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, uh, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, that he might prove thee to do good at thy latter end. Uh, there was something, uh, oh, I think I did, went through that, yep. Let's go to 17. He says, And thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of mine hand have guided me this. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his cup. So he's telling them, Don't forget God and be obedient to his commandments. Mm -hmm. Then what I read earlier, in there we see that he is telling, telling them again that this is the con these are the consequences that if you forget God, mm -hmm. if you are disobedient to him, this is what happens. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, I tell you what. But you're talking on the word repent, right? Yes, and, and we're, we're talking about the cause or the mm -hmm. reason why mm -hmm. this whole repentance thing is required and needed. One we see already, forgetting God. Mm -hmm. Forgetting God and to, we're going to see as we go on, to stay back the hand of destruction that that is well deserved mm -hmm. because of disobedience. Mm -hmm. Repentance, put it in order. Oh. Mm -hmm. We're going to see that as we come back next week. Because even in the New Covenant, oh, <laughs> in the over. New Covenant, repentance gets you cleansed. Because when you read First John... Yes. It talks about that. Get you, you know, we and get cleansed through that. Exactly. And we're going to see that as well. And again, it is, a, it is a method and a means in which get them back on track with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. We'd like to thank you for joining us here at Living Epistle Facebook Live, our Bible training session this evening. We'd like to invite you to come on out and be a part of our Sunday morning worship service at 11 a.m. Uh, we, we start on time and be a part of it. And then also come on back next week and be a part of this great Bible training session. 7.30 to 8.30, only one hour. So we invite you to come on back and tell a friend, tell someone to join and be a part of this great, great fellowship. We bless God and we thank God for you being with us on tonight. And I pray God's blessings upon you. And until next time, God bless you.